Hey guys, and welcome back. I'm Rachel O'Leary, and today we're going to see some of the things that goes into one of my days. Now, first up, I drove four hours round trip to pick up disease shrimp uh, that have that green fungus or yellow fungus, elobiopsidae, what, whatever this is. I picked them up to ship them off to University of Florida's um, lab in order to have them evaluated to see if we can figure out exactly what this is and more importantly, how to treat it. I sent a bunch of live samples and a couple preserved and then I got to work in the fish room each day. I pick five or six tanks that I do a pretty thorough cleaning of. I start with cleaning the glass, removing any algae, um, then I do a gravel vac and then I complete my water change by draining the aquariums over to the drain ports that I have set up around my fish room. Now on this side of the fish room, I haven't gotten around yet to running new drain ports. So it means using extra long hoses across the room, creating quite the tripping hazard for my feeble self. Um, but I do about 30 to 40% water change on these aquariums. Um, in my display side, this means more work than on the shipping rack. I usually do the shipping rack every couple of days and each of these bigger tanks um, once a week. Uh, while the 150 gallon hill stream is draining and filling simultaneously, I'll also start a siphon and clean up the tank below it. Um, removing any algae, replacing botanicals, uh, doing replanting, trimming, whatever needs be. And I do use caps on my siphons to prevent sucking fish up. Uh, when I'm done my water changes for the day, then it's time to feed the fish room. And this is quite honestly my favorite part. Now in the 150 gallon hill stream, there are a lot of different types of fish and a lot of different uh, strategies for feeding that we'll take a look at. You have your more typical community style fish like the white clouds and the shiners that will eat pretty much anything. But you also have things like this guy, this little gastromyzon or Borneo sucker who requires a fair amount of algae to graze on, which is why I only clean the front glass in this aquarium and I never clean my rocks as there's quite a few grazers in this aquarium that require that off walks. Um, off walks is the algae and micro crustaceans that grow on rocks uh, specifically, generally in areas of flow and things like these stiffodons, the blue guys and the Borneo suckers and the reticulated hill streams in this aquarium really require that as part of their diet. That being said, they do quite well being supplemented with things like I am here, which is uh, frozen cyclops as well as baby brine, though it is important to make sure that they are getting that that algae content in their diet. So I often feed this aquarium Rapashi superfoods. Let me know down in the comments if you guys would like to see another video on that as well. The new gobies that I got are doing awesome. Now those rhinogobius as well as my scarlet goby are meat eaters. So it's important that I supplement them with things like these micro crustaceans pretty frequently. I do also utilize some dried foods. As you guys know, I'll feed Sarah Onip once or twice a week in the aquariums, mainly because it makes everybody come to the glass, stay still, and it allows for me to get a good count of my fish as well as really evaluate their body condition. One of my favorite things about this particular aquarium is its new placement in the fish room. Because it's set up so tall, my eye level is the bottom third of the aquarium and that's where most of the action happens. I find absolute joy in feeding this aquarium and then just standing here looking back and forth across that bottom third to see all the different species of loaches that come out to see all the different sizes. These are the spiny loaches and they've bred like crazy. That little striped guy is a dwarf zebra hovering loach. Um, there's tons of coolies in here, silver coolies, the stiffodons, the rhinogobius, some of the, the stinging cats, the little uh, hara cats. You know, just really, really an incredible diversity of fishes. And this aquarium's not even halfway stocked. I'm so excited to get to work on that after the holidays. Um, as you can see, all the fungus has resolved on my driftwood. I just had to be patient. My plants, um, after their initial sort of freak out from being in buckets and then moved, are doing pretty well. Uh, the new Bucephalandras look great. And that giant willow moss looks amazing. Um, there is a tiny bit of string algae, but I get that in all my aquariums. Uh, pardon the cord. I'm trying out some new lighting to demo for you guys, but I'm waiting on a few more things to come in before I share that with you. 
All in all, though, I feel like this aquarium is one of my more successful and certainly one of my favorites just because it is so fun to watch. Now, the largest fish in this aquarium are the shiners as well as those Danio Kyathid or orange fin Danios that we see here. And they just add a little bit of scale for the aquarium, but my preference for this tank is to keep most of this species under two inches. And in that regard, I couldn't be happier. If you guys have suggestions for other fish you'd like to see in here that fall into that hill stream category, let me know. One of my favorite parts as well is seeing all these loaches burrow down into the super fine, super soft gravel. Underneath the gravel is a layer of egg crate so that there's no risk of collapse. But this area over here has become quite the hotbed for the fish to hang out and graze and feed. And it's super fun to watch. Um, they really like having those sort of crevices between the rocks. And again, the new maize face gobies are looking amazing. I can't wait until they grow and color up and just reach full maturity to share with you guys. Hopefully they'll breed as well. Most things in this aquarium do breed. Now I get asked all the time why I don't automate my aquariums and that's because it's just really important to me and fun for me to spend the time with the minutia, the details that go into maintaining my aquariums. It's like a treasure hunt for me, especially with a lot of the creatures I work with being small and often elusive. The bamboo shrimp in here are one of my favorite to go sort of hunting for within the aquarium to make sure I see all of them. And they're really thriving in this hill stream environment. Up next, I fed the 75 gallon nano um, and took some time to watch that. This aquarium seems to be going through some algae issues. Um, I am changing the lighting. It has the new lighting on it. Let me know what you guys think of the color spectrum. Um, but this is another one of my favorite aquariums. Here we have the Epistogramma cocktoides, um, dwarf cichlid from South America. This entire aquarium is made up of small South American fish, which is why I call it my 75 gallon nano. It is stocked with a ton of otocinclus, some orange laser quarries, a bunch of green neon tetras, as well as my barred pencil fish, which happen to be one of my favorite fish. And we'll see them here momentarily. You know, even though this, this 75 gallon doesn't have that many species, I love the way all the different species interact with the different levels of the aquarium, the tangles of driftwood, the thickets of plants. And it's just a real, really fun tank to sit and watch, which is why it's the one that's placed directly beside my armchair, um, especially with the green neons in this aquarium. I have to move slowly or they all dive into that wood. So one of my favorite things to do is just sit in my armchair when I'm done all of my maintenance, feed this aquarium and watch the interaction of all these fish and all the different levels of this aquarium. I really encourage you guys to consider keeping fewer species in greater numbers in your aquariums because seeing their behaviors when they're kept in these large groups is just extremely, extremely fulfilling for me to watch. And I have to imagine that it is for the fish as well. You figure in the wild, these guys are found in massive groups, massive schools. So seeing them in, in numbers like this really... It just makes a very, very impressive display. Now, if you guys would like me to make more longer format videos about each individual aquarium, let me know down in the comments. I think it could be pretty fun to really take a look at the minutiae of each of the aquariums that I've built over the past four years, as well as looking at the new projects coming up in the fish room. Um, so let me know down in the comments if that's something you'd like to see. As always, thank you for your continued support. I ask that you please make sure you subscribe with that notification bell on. I do put out videos three times a week, generally Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday. And I really enjoy reading your comments and hearing what you guys are up to. So make sure you drop me a comment. See you in the next video.